how to take advantage of the new screenshot tools in macOS Mojave. This video is sponsored by our friends over at MacPaul, who produce Clean My Mac X, a great way to clean up, protect, and speed up your Mac with just a few clicks. Click the link down below in the description to visit cleanmymac.com for a free download. Special thanks to MacPaul for sponsoring this video. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Screenshots have changed a bit in macOS Mojave. The good news is that all of your favorite shortcuts are still there, so you can still do things like Shift Command 3, for instance, to take a screenshot of the entire screen. The difference is you now get this iOS-inspired floating thumbnail in the bottom right-hand corner by default. Now that thumbnail, if you don't hover over it or touch it, it will go away after about five seconds, just like that with the screenshot being saved to the default location, in this case, the desktop. Let's take another screenshot. Okay, this time we're gonna swipe right to quickly dismiss the floating image preview, and you can see it saves to the default location, in this case, the desktop. Okay, this time we're gonna put our mouse on the floating image thumbnail, and we're gonna click, and that's going to open up the screenshot in Quick Look to allow us to examine the screenshot more closely. So let's go ahead and click. And here is the Quick Look interface. You see all the markup tools, so you can mark up directly within Quick Look. Uh, you don't have to open up any other applications. You can do this all on the fly, which is really cool. So this allows me to quickly annotate the screenshot, perhaps make suggestions on things I'd like to see changed. Uh, and then I can use the share option to share directly from Quick Look. So I can share to notes or AirDrop or messages or mail, whatever. And then I can delete from Quick Look. If I don't want to save the screenshot, I can quickly get rid of it. It won't save to the default location. And of course, I can close the screenshot as well without saving my changes. So it just keeps the original screenshot version. But of course, it doesn't stop there when it comes to screenshots in macOS Mojave. So let's go ahead and take another and show you what else this thing can do. Okay, now you can also right click on the floating image thumbnail and save to different locations. You can open with different applications. You can show in Finder, you can delete, you can mark up and you can close. I'm gonna delete in this instance because I don't want that screenshot and it just goes away without saving at all. So we're gonna try another. This time though, watch what happens. You can actually drag the floating image preview directly into a supporting application. In this case, the mail app. And that makes it super easy. You don't have to go through this whole process of saving to the desktop, dragging from the desktop. Just do it all in one fell swoop. Super nice new feature and uh, similar to what you find on the iPad. But that floating image preview is just part one of the new changes that you find in Mojave. Now there is a standalone screenshot utility that you'll find in Mojave that makes it easy to take screenshots via a graphical user interface. So you can see it right here. You can access that via the utilities folder or use the keyboard shortcut shift command five to bring it right up just like that. You can drag the screenshot utility interface around so you can put it in the exact spot that you want it to be or you can dock it right back into place and you see that little outline allows it to dock right back in its default place. So that's pretty cool. Lots of attention to detail here with this screenshot utility. So you can capture the entire screen, capture a selected window, and of course you can use the command shift for keyboard shortcut and then use the space bar. And the same thing goes for capturing a selected portion, command shift four. But notice the attention to detail, how the screenshot utility sort of fades out of the way as you're moving the bounding boxes here. So again, it's very evident that a lot of attention to detail was paid. This isn't just some afterthought, but Apple really put a lot of time and effort into making the screenshot utility. You see, I captured just that selected portion and you get the nice floating preview that you can open with Quick Look. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the options that you can configure within the screenshot utility. So if I click the options button, you will see a list of different things here. Let's really focus here on remember last selection to start. All right, so what, what this does is it basically will remember my bounding boxes that I selected when you use the capture selected portion option to take your screenshot. So right now I have that remember option enabled. So I'm capturing that selected portion. And when I click off and go back to it, you notice it picks up right where you left off. But if I uncheck that option, notice it no longer remembers where my bounding boxes were 
when switching back to capture selected portion. So just something to keep in mind. So while we're at it, let's go ahead and briefly demonstrate the capture type. So that is the full screen capture. And then we have selected window. So let's open up a window here. All right, let's go back and select it window. Then we just hover over and then click on the one we want like this. Let's open it up and there we go. All right, so we already showed you the capture selected portion. So let's skip right over to something really exciting and that is the ability to record your screen using the screenshot utility. So you have two options. You can record the entire screen just like this, and then you'll see a little stop button in your menu bar, you just click stop, and just like a screenshot, you'll get that floating image preview there. So you can right click on that, you get some additional options, or at least one additional option, opening up in QuickTime. But when you open up Quick Look here, you can see a trim option, which allows you to trim that video, which is basically a video, a screen capture. And once you click done, that is saved directly to the default location, in this case, the desktop. So that's really cool. And then you can also record a selected portion of your screen as well. So we're going to draw the bounding box here and we'll just click on record. And now it's recording just that portion of the screen. So whatever appears in that portion of the screen will be recorded. So part of the dock will be recorded here. Part of this finder window will be recorded. You get the point. So when we're done, all you do is hit the stop button in the menu bar. It shows up there and then you can just play it back. You can see the recording like that. That's really cool. To be able to do that directly from the screenshot interface is nice. Okay, so let's talk about some additional options. Of course, uh, some of the universal options that apply to both screen captures and screenshots, the save to location, so you can choose the default location where the screenshots or recordings will be saved. There's also a timer option, so you can specifically time your screenshots if you wish. And then there's microphone, which applies obviously to screen recordings. Uh, and then options down below here, show mouse clicks applies to screen recordings. So you can enable or disable that. But if you switch over to a screenshot, you'll notice show mouse clicks doesn't display, neither does microphone, but you do have show mouse pointer, which is interesting. That is something that I like to use the old grab tool to do, uh, which is no longer a part of Mac OS. But basically when you take a screenshot with that enabled, you will see the mouse pointer appear in the screenshot. That normally doesn't happen unless that option is selected. Now, lastly, I want to show you that you can disable the floating thumbnail, and this really affects screenshots taken with the utility and with just normal keyboard shortcuts, which is kind of nice if you just like the way that macOS has always worked. You want your screenshots to appear immediately on the desktop. Well, there you have it. Now you can use keyboard shortcuts like Command Shift 3, Command Shift 4, and those screenshots will appear directly on the default location without having to worry about any sort of floating window or anything like that. And that works for both screenshots taken with the utility and screenshots taken with just keyboard shortcuts. So quite a lot to change with screenshots in macOS Mojave, but as a reminder, I wanted to thank our friends over at MacPaul, sponsors of this video. Clean My Mac X is a great way to keep your Mac running at optimal performance. And for someone like me who works with video, it's especially useful for quickly identifying large files and getting rid of those with ease. Click the link down below in the description to visit cleanmymac.com and try it out today. Special thanks to Mac Paul for sponsoring this video. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think about screenshots in macOS Mojave. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.